Welcome back to Epic Game Tech! Some time ago I bought a second hand PC, so I could transform it into a budget gaming rig. That PC had quite an old GTX 650 video card, so I've replaced it with a newer GPU. And today I've decided to pull that GTX 650 out since it might be handy in my upcoming ultra budget build. Stay with me since I will be showing a cleaning and reapplying thermal paste process. If you are interested in a similar content, be sure to subscribe and click that bell button so you don't miss upcoming videos. And let's get started! Yes, my friends, here I have quite an old Gigabyte GTX 650 1 GB version video card. As I mentioned before, I pulled this one from one of the second hand PCs I bought some time ago. I'm preparing another ultra budget gaming PC build. So in case you want to see my first ultra budget build for 120 euros, I will put a link at the top right corner. So I've decided to check my boxes where I keep various PC components and voila, I found this graphics card. Candidate number one for my build. Ok, so as you can see it has just one fan and quite a small heatsink compared to a newer and more expensive card. There is some dust trapped in a heatsink as well as some strange hardened stains on a card's PCB. Well, for cleaning PC parts including your GPU you need to have some alcohol wipes, compressed air and some cotton swabs. With alcohol wipes you can easily clean hardened thermal paste, dust or other type of stains. Compressed air can will help you out to blow away dust from hard to reach places such as heating gaps. You will be just fine without cotton swabs, but I tend to use them in some cases. In case you need any of these to clean your PC parts, you will find links in the description below. It's quite easy to disassemble this GPU model. You have to unscrew four main heatsink screws at the back of the card and then unplug fan's header. I've seen much worse situations, so it's not that bad, but as you can see there is some dust in a heatsink and on the fan blades as well. Thermal paste is quite solid in most places, so it's about time to reapply it. Before cleaning everything up, Let's remove a fan from a heatsink. It's straightforward, just a few screws and we are done. It's about time to use a compressed air can, but please go outside before doing that, since your room will be covered with a decent amount of dust. It's really handy to have one of such cans at home. I bought 600 ml version and it lasted me for 5 or 6 PC cleanups. Well, my compressed air can is almost finished, so it's not generating as much pressure as I would want and it's about time I order a new one. For removing a thermal paste you should use alcohol wipes or other wipes meant for cleaning up electronics. Even regular wipes are ok in case a thermal paste has not become a concrete yet. When cleaning a video card die. Be careful, especially when you clean around those small transistors. I've used a cotton swab here, since I've discovered it's much easier to clean, especially around them, but in most cases cleaning it with wipes works just fine. Here come those stains I've mentioned before. Seems that previous owner spilled some kind of a substance on his case, I don't know or even straight on the GPU. I really hope it's actually working since I've decided to test it only after this cleanup. Well, there is nothing you can't remove with wipes and a careful scrubbing. All stains are gone for good. As video cards die, it has no IHS and is directly connecting with a heating, it's important to fully cover all die. For that purpose I've used a bit more paste than I would use for a CPU. But please make sure your thermal paste is not conductive before doing that. 
Congrats! This is how much of a dirt you removed from your graphics card. This means it will last longer and will be working under the lower temperature. And since most of the new cards have their auto boost technology, most probably it will be able to boost to a higher core clock and in theory games will run better. Also, the lower temperature will provide you a bigger headroom for overclocking your card. Well, it's time to assemble everything and check if my GTX 650 is booting since it's the only option I have for my upcoming ultra-budget PC project I mentioned previously. Oh, it's working like a charm! Well, that's it for today. Like always, I will put all the links in the description below. I hope you enjoyed my video, then click like and subscribe if you liked it and see you soon!